In this next part of the workshop, I'm going to show you how to add a layer of depth and detail to your icon, just to bring it to life a little bit, using a technique or a design style we call flat design. So I'm going to start by selecting the handle of the magnifying glass, and I'm going to make a copy. So I'm going to press Command C, um, which would be Control C on Windows, and then I'm going to press Command F, and that's going to paste a copy directly in front. Okay. Now it's difficult to see because it looks exactly the same. Um, so uh, I'm just going to pop it into another layer. And I'm going to call this layer spare layer because it's just uh, for the purpose of helping us to work on these shadow effects. So I'm going to select when the, with the new handle selected, I'm going to press con Control or Command X if you're on a Mac to cut, and then I'm going to go make sure I'm in the spare layer and go to Edit, Paste in Place. Now, this is going to paste it exactly where it was before, but just in the new layer. Et voila. Then I can lock all of the artwork underneath. So I'm going to zoom in a bit now to show you um, the next steps. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'm going to make some changes to the rectangle tool and all will be apparent soon. So I'm going to swap to my direct select tool by pressing shortboard key, keyboard shortcut A. Okay, so I pressed A on my keyboard and as you can see my mouse has turned to the white direct select tool. Now I'm going to select just one corner to work on. So if I click on the corner, you see a little dot has appeared behind my direct select tool arrow and that indicates I'm working on just one corner. And it will be very clear in a moment why I'm doing this. Same thing, point, click. I've got the little dot behind my arrow indicating I'm working on one corner. I'm removing the rounded corners. Going back to the select tool by pressing keyboard shortcut V. And now I'm going to drag my copy until I hit intersect. So I know it's intersecting with the midpoint of the copy underneath. Okay, so it doesn't look too different at the moment. What I want you to do is go to the Word document worksheet. And I want you to pick up the color for the shadow. Press Control Copy, tab back to Illustrator, double click on the fill, paste your new cut color into the fill and press OK. Now as you can see it's quite a contrast, uh, it's a little bit uh, shocking, we want to make that a bit softer. So I'm going to go to Opacity, change Opacity from 100% to 50% and press Return. Now we can see we have a subtle, well, more subtle difference in the, the brown, which is kind of indicating a folded shadow and the regular color. Now we're going to repeat this process for the other elements of the magnifying glass. But before they, I do that, I'm just going to put this shadow, I'm going to move it from the spare layer back into the magnifying glass layer. So I'm going to select it, Command X to cut, go back to the magnifying glass layer and go to edit, and paste in place. Et voila, it is back in the magnifying glass layer. My spare layer is empty. So using, I'll use that spare layer again in just a moment to repeat the process for the neck. Select the neck, Control C for, for copy, Control F for paste in front. Okay, and now again, I'm going to change until it intersect. Okay, excellent. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to overtype the color with my new brown. Oops, maybe I need to go back to Word to get that, which is there. I have lost the copy. Okay. And there we go. Great. Okay, so again, it's a bit dark, so um, I can change the opacity, either using the uh, little grab and move thingy, can't remember what that's called right now, or over typing it. Now, there is another way um, I can uh, repeat this process, it's actually much quicker, so I'm just going to show you that now. So I'm just going to press Control Z uh, to undo those changes. Now this uh, way of um, this imitating a, a colour, uh, an object and its colour, it will imitate the fill 
the stroke and even the stroke uh, thickness. So if I want this object to look like this object, this is what I do. Highlight the object, press I, the ink dropper tool, and then click on the object I would like to imitate. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I now have the same effect, which is great. Now I want to do the same thing with the circle. It takes a few more steps, but we'll go through those together. So um, the circle, uh, it's quite complicated. There's quite a few objects again. So I'm going to want to, to take a copy, control copy, uh, control front. Okay. And let's just see where I put that copy. Okay. So I'm just going to move it up in the layer. So there's the copy. Okay, just to recap, I just grabbed it and, and brought it up a couple of layers so we could we could see uh, that it has copied. Now I'm going to lock and hide the question mark, lock and hide the lens flare. So then we can just work on this. And then I'm going to drag the copy into the spare layer and then I can lock the underneath layer. So I'm only working on this copy of the magnifying glass circle at the moment. Now, this is the bit where you need to pay attention because I'm going to do something new. I'm going to use my direct select tool. So I'm going to press A on the keyboard and now I'm going to drag over the line of the circle between these two anchor points. Okay, so I just do that one more time. A for direct select tool, drag over. And then I'm going to hit delete or backspace depending on your keyboard. And I'm going to do the same. I am going to do the same over here. Drag on the line between the two corner anchor points. Press delete. I'm going to delete this um, spare anchor point over here. Uh, sorry, I need to go to the minus tool. Sorry, minus key on my keyboard, and hit the anchor point. So now I've deleted the line, the anchor point, and the line. Okay. So back to the direct select tool. Now I've got kind of a semicircle. I've actually got a semicircle that's open because there isn't a line between these two points, but we can fix that using the pen tool. So I'm going to press P and now I have the pen tool, which is a tool you can generally just draw lines with, but you can also use it for closing shapes that are not finished. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If you hover the pen tool over an open anchor point, so an anchor point that doesn't lead to another, you will see a little sort of forward slash uh, line appear next to your pen tool. So click on that anchor point and then go to another open anchor point. And if the two can, um, if you draw a line between the two and it closes a shape, you will see this little circle appear uh, next to the uh, pen tool. And that means you're closing a shape. So click there. And now we have a complete closed semicircle. So et voila, perfect. So now we can uh, copy the effect of the other tools. So I'm just going to unlock the magnifying glass layer so I can press I for ink drop tool. Select the one I want to copy. Et voila, I've made a copy. I have the shade. Now we want to move this from the spare layer back into our magnifying glass layer and we want to tuck it underneath the lens color. So I'm grabbing, actually let me do that again because I actually did that wrong. I'm going to select the shadow I'm going to press control cut and then I'm going to press file and paste in place. The spare layer is now empty and I need to just use my layers. I'm just going to pull that down underneath uh, the lens, the greeny blue teal colored lens. So I'm just going to do that for you one more time just to show you. So at the moment, when I am selecting the shadow of the circle, you can see that we're highlighted here. So this is what's active. If I grab that path, pull it down underneath the lens, it's pulling it down almost like stacking papers, if you can imagine that. So we're, we're using the layers panel to determine the order of the objects so we can have the transparency, uh, the shadow effect underneath the teal lens. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. So then we can close up our magnifying glass. We can get rid of the spare layer because we've finished with that now. So we're going to drag it down to the bin and then we can show our lens shine. 
and we can also show our question mark and now we have this lovely uh, sort of half shadow effect that just gives a little bit of interest and detail to our design.